Hello, friends. Welcome to another episode of the Dateable Podcast, where we dig deep into modern dating, people's behavior, and how we can get rid of bad dating behavior and start praising people for good dating behavior. (laughs) And this is what this season is about. Season 14. Hope you all like the first episode. That was quite the banger. (laughs) So good. I think, you know, we got so much feedback that it made people look at themselves in ways they never did before. Mm -hmm. And feel good that the multiple voices inside of you are all of you. You're not crazy. (laughs) It's just crazy. You're dynamic. It is fascinating, though. We were talking about this earlier. When we first started this podcast, it was all about funny dating stories or, you know, the interactions between too much. But so much is the relationship with yourself. And I Mm. feel like in this season, too, whether you're dating in a relationship Whatever your status is, I feel like that is a common theme that we're going to keep bringing home because it really just does, at the end of the day, that's what makes the difference. It really does. And whenever daters say, it's my city, it's the apps, it's the people on the apps, but then you listen to everybody complaining about the exact same thing, you start to wonder, hmm, are we all guilty of that said behavior? Because we are. So we can only take responsibility for ourselves. And this is why Julie and I have really refocused the content of this podcast on a lot of the Mm self-improvement material, because that's the only thing we have control over. It is ourselves. Yeah. And we hear for this week's episode, we hear this all the time that one of the biggest struggles in modern dating You know, there's a lot of struggles, so it's not the only (laughs) one, but one of them is getting past a third date. For some Mm. reason, it feels like quite an accomplishment to get past a third date in today's world. And we hear often the reason at this point, it's not that there's no attraction. Usually by date three, someone's already kind of established that piece. It's that there's no emotional connection. Those are like the dreaded words that mm-hmm. gets sent to your text that it's we will not be going out again because there is no emotional connection. Have you ever gotten that before, UA? I've sent that text before. <laughs> <laughs> I sure have. And I sent it because I didn't know what else to say. It just seemed like the the only logical thing to send. And it's it's right. I mean the when I sent that text, I remember the guy kept trying to convince me otherwise Mm. so he tried to call me and ask me like what if we did this what if I was all in what if we went on vacation you know like all but to me my mind was already made up that there was just nothing there and I think a lot of times this happens when we can't get past the date talk the date review and it feels like we're on the same date again and again and again But the flip side, I don't think I've actually gotten that there's no emotional connection. I think my flip side was maybe there's too much emotional connection. What? (laughs) Like a trauma dump. You know what I mean? Like I think some people (laughs) slip on the other side. (laughs) Of course, Julie would get too much emotional connection. (laughs) Well, I swear some of the dates where I thought we had the most riveting emotional connection, that's when I got ghosted. When we bared Mm. our soul. And I think it was too much too soon. So I think the flip side of not enough emotional connection is just too much of the other direction. And then both of them just prove that you're just not connecting on a personal level. It's it's either not there's it's either you're not being vulnerable at all or you're like being too vulnerable regardless of whoever's in front of you. And neither of those feel customized to the person. This is why we have our guest on this episode, Celeste Headley, who's a journalist. She's a renowned journalist. She is so great at talking to people, conversing with them, asking them the right questions. And this is what she's basically known for now is how to be a great conversationalist. I feel like I learned a lot from this episode Mm -hmm. and we talk all the time. Yeah, we do. (laughs) But there's a difference between talking and being a good conversationalist. And we dive into all of that. And it is a skill that we're never taught. We're expected to just magically connect with other people. And, you know, sometimes you do need to take a step back and think about it in a different way. And this episode does just that. And I don't, I think there's different conversations that happen at the early stage of dating, 
But even as you progress a relationship, there's a lot of hard conversations Mm -hmm. that are kind of come up. And this is all about how do you have conversations that matter? And in what medium? We go into that too a lot. Tech can, you know, facilitate and also hurt connections. So that's like an interesting facet of this convo too. And if you have just one takeaway from this entire interview is that you've been lied to. We've been lied to that having a good conversation or being a good conversationalist means you ask all the right questions and you ask a lot of questions. And I can't say this enough that we some some of us go into dates with a list of questions to ask someone and we feel like the more questions we ask, the better. That's not necessarily the case. And Celeste is going to tell you what is the number one factor for being a good conversationalist. And it's not being a question Uh, uh, asking a ton of questions. No, I was thinking too, after doing this episode of just a lot of stuff that's going on in my life of just how the questions change throughout Mm. the different stages. Uh, I shared this with UA, obviously, probably not everyone yet, but I am actually starting the egg freezing procedure. So that's going to be interesting. Hopefully I don't get too crazy at the next week. I'll hopped up on hormones. Were you going to say heroin? (laughs) Hopped up on heroin and hormones. (laughs) It was a trick. (laughs) All hopped up on hormones. (laughs) And I have to say, it has been so, it's been very interesting watching watching your entire journey up until this point, even though it hasn't even started yet. It hasn't even started yet. (laughs) Because there's so many variables right now. You're, You're balancing so many fucking things. I like cannot say this enough when I say I'm I'm really I admire you for what you're going through because this is a lot of decisions that you have to make all at once. Yeah. Well, I think the most fascinating part of it too is that it had my partner and I talk about things that we if we were going by, you know, traditional timelines, you mm-hmm. would meet, you would become to have the DTR, be committed, move in together, then get married, then discuss kids. But yep. now <laughs> you are flipping that script. And, you know, we definitely discussed this a lot at length and it brought up a lot of things. And we actually had difficult conversations, but ultimately came out ahead from them. So I think in general, sometimes it's easy to avoid difficult conversations and in a way I'm glad that this was like a catalyst to bring up those combos because we might not have had them as soon but it also it's it's fascinating because we are reversing the order on a lot of this stuff with today's Mm -hmm. like world and technology and all the abilities we have yeah so like while you're figuring out if you like each other yeah you're also trying to figure out do we want to to make babies together those are two very different sides of the coin but it, well to me what is baffling is when you said you know like these are topics that you may for in a, like a normal timeline you would talk about later in a relationship mm-hmm. But then to me, I'm like, why do we delay these conversations in a relationship? Because ultimately, that is what's going to come up anyway. You know what it is? It's not that we haven't had these convos, but they Mm -hmm. felt more abstract. Right. This made it feel real because something was happening. And I think that's the difference is that it's really easy to like, it's really easy to imagine your future with someone and even tell them about the future. But Mm -hmm. when it actually comes down to doing the steps, that's when it shows if you're ready or not. Yes. Yes. And we talked about this too, is everybody says, oh yeah, I see a future with a partner and kids and a family and all that. But we don't stop to think about the steps to getting there. And that's the stuff that really matters Mm -hmm. because that's the journey to getting to that I don't know, the, the, these future milestones. So I'm curious to know, now that you had your first appointment, what went down today? What is the beginning of this entire process? Yeah, I mean, for anyone, of course, this is just my experience, not a universal experience. But the first, I mean, I haven't actually injected any medication yet. So if you think I sound weird, that's just how I sound. It's not because of any <laughs> medications. I have like forewarned some people though, because I have heard one of my best friends, she was in love with everyone when she did it. (laughs) So (laughs) 
<laughs> she was like talking about a mutual friend and she was really excited about him and I never heard her talk about this guy before <laughs> and I'm like are you sure or like an ex this guy that she was blatantly uh, not into like a month earlier was thinking about revisiting things with him and I'm like maybe you should make mm. any decision once the meds are cleared just a uh, just an idea yeah, yeah. so <laughs> Who knows what next next week might get a little interesting. We'll see how it goes. But it basically can be anywhere from 8 to 12 days when you start. It's okay. how fast your body responds. Okay, so the next time we record, I will be on meds deeper okay. in. So we'll see if I get crazier as we go. This is a real life science experiment yeah on the fly we're all for our listeners live. they're like listening they're like is she getting crazier each week or not <laughs> um so one week it basically from the day you start it's eight to 12 days until you actually get the retrieval okay so it could be eight days if your body re- reacts well to the meds or it could be 12 days depending on it maybe even longer i don't know that i think they say eight to 12 days generally and how do you know when you're you keep going in you go in for appointments so i'm not the one making the call if they tell me to wait a day i'm not gonna be like no i need to go now you know so it's it's constant with the provider i'm using um so today it was just to make sure i was ready to go and it was most of the time was how to do the shots in the meds Mm -hmm. and I will say if I hate saying this so much because people do it all the time on their own Mm -hmm. but I think I would be a lot more overwhelmed if I was doing it on my own having my partner Mm -hmm. there and having him that I know will help me with these shots it definitely felt good not Mm -hmm. to say you can't do it on your own I have tons of friends that have done it on their own it is totally doable but for me it I think that's the part I'm the most nervous about, too, is doing the shots. So I think having that support was really, really great. And it's a shot in your abdomen, right? Yes. That yes. is scary. It's a long-ass <laughs> needle. I witnessed my friend May do it multiple times. And it's it, – good thing she's an ER doctor. So she's like, whatever, needles. I see it all the time. But, man, I have almost fainted just watching her do it. Yeah. Well, they said uh, – well, you have to, like, grab your stomach fat. Uh huh, and I was like, "Well, this is the best. This is the only time it pays not to have flat abs." <laughs> they said it's more painful. I'm like half joking. They said it's more painful the less fat you have on your abs because you have to grab, you grab the fat, uh, yeah, and then insert. And then how mm-hmm. long? How often do you do the every shots? day? Every day, yeah, until retrieval. Yes, so eight to twelve days. You know. Some friends said they did it multiple times a day. The place I'm going to does once a day. I'm pretty happy about that. That was a win yes. hearing that. Yes. So, yeah, we'll keep you all posted. <laughs> you know, it won't be every last detail. But if there's any questions, too, in the Facebook group, I'm happy to answer. At least, again, my perspective only. Everyone has different experiences. Well, good luck to you and your partner on that this morning julie and i were on a call and it was right before her <laughs> appointment was... and she was like sorry y'all i gotta go not because i need to go to another meeting but because i'm getting i'm i'm freezing my eggs okay <laughs> well <laughs> really it was running go. way over and he was like waiting downstairs and i was gonna be real late <laughs> He's like, like, how do I I'm interrupt go this without being rude? I got to go freeze my eggs. Bye. And it was the best because everyone on the call was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, get it. We get it. Go. Please. Please I like go. saw the timing. And I was like, fuck. It is getting late. It is getting late. Something you said to me um, also earlier in the week, you were saying we're basically freezing time. And I thought that was like actually very profound because to me, it's like a I used to think of it as like a preventative measure in a way. It's like mm. you're preventing from infertility to happen in the in the future. But you're you're saying like it's it's freezing time and the fact that you can have you almost like you can have a little bit more time to enjoy with your partner mm-hmm. without kids before you make that final decision. I mean that okay, so I do want to clarify that this is by no means a sure thing. And I've been told from many doctors, like, I could do this whole thing and get nothing from it. 
one, retrieve nothing, but also they don't think it will be nothing, but they don't know what the quality is going to be like right. until I go right. to use it. So even if you get a ton of eggs, obviously the more, the better chance that one will be good. But they've said that there were situations where someone would come with a ton of eggs and none of them were viable. So yep. putting that out there, that is def- I hate when people say it's an insurance policy. It's it actually not. bothers me because it is not. And I hate when people say it's a sure thing. You are buying a better shot down the line, mm-hmm. basically. I think that is kind of – that was the decision. And I mean – a big piece of this too is that I did get some fertility benefits. So mm-hmm. would I have made this decision as much without that? I don't know. You know, that was a driver. I'm, I won't lie about that. And there is a very real financial side to this whole thing. Mm-hmm. So there's that piece of it. The other side is that is that is primarily why we decided to do this because we've talked about the potential to have kids. And as you heard in the episode we did with Kate Kennedy I'm still not 100% sure but Mm -hmm. the more and more I'm with my partner the more I can visualize it that being said we're both not ready right this minute right so I think the idea is if there's if there's a way that we can maximize our chance in any way then Mm -hmm. we'll take that chance and that's how I'm viewing it and again there's there's financial elements. I don't want to downplay that. Everyone has to yeah. make the decision for themselves because you, in yeah. theory, could be throwing away this money. Right, right, right. Well, yeah. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Things women have to go through. Can I just yeah. say that? And then there's egg versus embryo. There's so many differing variations. And we had all those conversations. And, it, and- it's a lot. It's a lot. And this is just the egg freezing part. Mm-hmm. You still have to retrieve and yep. all of that. Oh. Yeah, that's the thing. In two years, you could go and nothing could happen. Or the more positive spin is you could be trying and it's not mm-hmm. working and you go and this is your saving grace. So, mm-hmm. yeah, you just don't know. But it's, again, buying a better shot. Yeah. An option. An option. Whew. Well, okay. <laughs> heavy stuff. We're going into lighter stuff, people. But, you know, the heavy convos are important also. Very important. And this is like, I don't want to say test of a relationship, but it is. It is. Oh, it a- took our relationship to the next level for it sure. It has to. <laughs> yeah. No fuck boy is going to be like, yeah, let's free the eggs. <laughs> let's <laughs> po- put a shot in your stomach. It's yeah. Like- I'll take you to your doctor's appointment. Yeah. Like that's never yeah. gonna happen. No, no, it's next level. <laughs> uh, so now we know your boyfriend's not a fuck boy. So we, that's for sure. <laughs> I wasn't that concerned, but yes. <laughs> They're like, no, I need to take a shot at the bar, not at the yeah. office. <laughs> he did pass the test. Well, yeah. Um, I don't even know how to transition out of this, so I'm just gonna say <laughs> just change I'm gears. Do it. I'm just gonna change gears. Should we talk I about wanna... the news that we we're on the news this week? We were we were on the Skim podcast, and a few of you also li- listened to the Skim, which is so fun. Um, that we were we did not realize that World War Three was going to break out um, when we get to, at the time of our interview. So it was just it was just uh, timing wise, it was very interesting to be part of the same episode about what's happening in the Ukraine. Um, but we were at the tail end of that episode, and I hope we provided some lightheartedness to I kind that of episode. Feel like that's our role in news because the same yeah. thing happened to you with MSNBC. It was all about homelessness like the- and drug overdoses, and then it's and crash usage to yeah. Valentine's Day. Yeah, <laughs> with UA and Julie for the Dateable Podcast. I think that is our role: is to lighten the mood. We're still providing. Information. Information. We're still on the news. We're still newsworthy, but it's a little lighter information. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) We took it pretty seriously because the whole topic was about scams and Tinder Swindler, what's happening with these romance scams, as they call it. And there's been a rise in romance scam cases. So it is a very serious topic, but Mm -hmm. also just in comparison, what's to what's going on in the world today it was not as serious maybe it was more serious two weeks ago when they were in planning mode 
Right, right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But that is a good call out because we do want to do an episode about mm-hmm. safety and dating. It's something we've been wanting to do for a long time. It's about how do we find the right people to be part of this. And we were thinking that we could do it more as an expose bottle. You might remember our episodes like The Sex Party or (laughs) Ashley Madison. We did a few of these or the start of COVID dating during Mm -hmm. COVID-19. We did one like this where we clipped together a bunch of people's stories to tell more of a holistic story. So if you have had an experience getting scammed, whether Mm -hmm. you, you, you don't even have to have like wired money, but someone may have just approached you for this or in some way scammed you on a dating app, drop us a line and we'd love to talk to you and see if there's a fit for this expose feature. So you can mm-hmm. always email us at hello at datablepodcast.com. And also we'll put a post up on Instagram and Facebook too. So let's fi- help us. Or So if you've been here yourself, let's hear from you. Yes. Let's raise the red flags too. This didn't during my inter, during our interview with the skim, I said something that I am currently experiencing, and I don't know if anybody else is experiencing this, but I know my partner and I are seeing an influx in LinkedIn mm. uh, requests by Asian Chinese people who have a very strong pedigree. So they either say they went to Stanford or Harvard and they work in engineering and they have all these credentials and their profile photos are very attractive. But when you click on their profile, to me, it was just like, this seems fake for some reason. But it made sense because I think they're building up their LinkedIn profiles so yeah. to validate their their um, identity when you search for them if you match with them on dating apps. So this is like their way of scamming people on dating apps is by building up their online credibility. So just watch out for those two because yeah. if you say yes to these people, you're basically part of their scam. You are an enab- enabler in a way. So I was out last night with two friends of mine at the Battery, which is a social club at SF. Mm-hmm. And we they were talking about we were because t- I was I was telling them about the skim and they were saying that they noticed an influx of these people on dating apps. And wow. they said it was really funny because they would be <laughs> they would use the prompts and then their photo wouldn't match the prompt. It would just be oh. like something like show me your best self and then it would be or like, like an ice like, cream cone. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> or the guy would say something like, this is my funny side. And he'd have like this stoic look like deep into the camera. <laughs> like it just didn't match up. And it wasn't ironic either. It just, it was clear that someone had put together this profile real fast. Uh-huh. And one of my friends said they were always inter- they were always from another country. She said too that she matched with a few of them and they would immediately unmatch her if she didn't respond in a certain (gasps) amount of time. So my (sighs) guess too is they probably were just trying to do the hot leads. Like they probably had so many people they matched with. And they're going to get one fucker who's going to yeah. be like, yeah, this sounds great. Remember that text I got when I was in New York? I showed you some girl, who knows, some somebody texted me and said, <laughs> hey, Keanu, this is so this is heaven from Hinge. We matched. Sorry, I'm running a little late. Uh, something like that. Like, sorry, I'm running a little late. I just want to let you know. And then I responded back and said, this is the wrong number. And she's like, oh, it is. But do you like to have fun? Do you want to keep chatting? Like, what is going on? Right. Well, you don't know who's on the other side of this ever. But that being said, we don't want to discourage people from dating apps. <laughs> Just be smart about it. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the reality is the majority of people are on there for the right intentions. Yes. But just be, you know, when things seem too good to be true, maybe mm-hmm. take a step back and say, is it too good to be true? Yeah. And if they ask for money, say, fuck you. Just yeah. say that. Before we move off this topic completely, have you watched Inventing Anna? Because I'm obsessed with this show. <laughs> Do you like the show? Okay. I started season or the first episode. It was a little slow for me, but I yeah. might have to just keep trying because she is really fascinating to me. Yes. She is so smart. So what I, I, for anyone that's un, like, that doesn't know about this, it's basically another swindler, mm-hmm. but she, it wasn't geared to dating. It was that she was in the Manhattan 
elite like so social, social yeah like the, yeah like the so, she was in like this is uh what's her she's like society. a socialite of in manhattan and she would stay at hotels she never like she didn't have an apartment she was from germany so it was always that her bank accounts weren't working but she had a massive trust fund so she had this illusion that she was super rich mm -hmm. but wasn't paying for any of her bills and mm -hmm. totally screwed one of her best friends like put her in major debt at her company credit card so it was it's a fascinating story it falls so in line with tinder swindler it's just even more interesting to me because these people believe they were friends with this person mm -hmm. and it's got to be so crazy to think that someone was living this alternate reality and they this was not them are you just shocked by how knowledgeable these swindlers are i mean look at the tinder swindler he knew everything about the diamond industry. Yeah. He knew everything about that business because he studied about it. And then same with Anna. He knows she knows everything about art. Yes. She, like she can be very informed and knowledgeable that way. So for them to be in the positions they're in, they must have just studied their asses off to be part of this high society and really blend in. All the other stuff that she was doing, she was changing her voice on an oh app God. to be a lawyer or something like she was doing some oh crazy ass gosh. shit She's crazy. but yeah anyways we won't go on a tangent too long especially for people that haven't watched the show but i think it's i would recommend watching it it is a little slow there were times that um i said to myself am i still on the same episode right I feel yes like it's been it like two hours yes but i think all in all it was a really good show okay I will definitely try to watch that. Uh, I do want to give a shout out to my new friend, Nick, who I met <laughs> recently, who listens to the podcast. Aww. Speaking of Swindler, he also goes by a different name. Um, so I guess I'm close <laughs> enough with him to know his real name is Nick. <laughs> and if he's listening, he knows what I'm talking about. He goes by a different name. Is Not it his middle swindle. name? Because a lot nope. of people do that. Okay. Nope, nope. The, the other name he goes by was a completely made up name that someone else gave him. I don't so. know. This has Anna <laughs> vibes all over it. <laughs> well, uh, hi, Nick. If that is your <laughs> real name, I don't even know. And also, we do correspond on WhatsApp, which is the ultimate like scam app, right? <laughs> the so more and more you tell the story, the more and more I Damn think you're, I think you is getting swindled, guys. <laughs> oh, my God. Give me, give, give me back my $10,000. Damn it. I thought I was smarter than that. Well, we have talked a lot today, so we'll be really quick on the announcements. At Dateable Podcast is Instagram. Love in the Time of Corona is our Facebook group. Quick caveat, Sounding Board is our premium Facebook group. And beyond Facebook group, that's where all the magic happens of the, ver uh, the weekly sound offs, office hours with UA and I. We have noticed a lot of people requesting access to that Facebook group. You do need to sign up for the, for the sounding board and then we will by all means let you in. So if you're pending, it is not that we don't want you in the sounding board. It's that you just need to actually sign up first. So that's the quick PSA. 